All right, so the first question, gallium is in a simple cubic lattice. So I like to organize my information. Simple cubic structures, we remember there's just eight atoms at the corners of the cube. So that means there's one atom per cell. I also remember in simple cubic, the two atoms are touching on every edge of the cell. So that means two radii will equal S, where S is the side or the edge of the cube. We are looking at, question gives us the radius. The radius of the gallium atom is 141 picometers. And then I'm going to need the molar mass of gallium. Let's set a periodic table. 69.72. Is the molar mass of gallium. So we're trying to find the density of the gallium. So density is going to equal the mass of the cell divided by the volume of the cell. So those are the two things I need to calculate. I was given the radius in picometers. So what I'll probably do to start is just switch the picometers, my radius. I'll switch picometers to meters. I'll switch meters to centimeters because the volume that I'm going to calculate will be in cubic centimeters at the end. If I don't remember the prefix pico, my data booklet tells me that pico is 10 to the minus 12. So that means one picometer is one times 10 to the minus 12 meters. And one meter has 100 centimeters in it. So 141 times one times 10 to the negative 12 times 100 is 1.41 times 10 to the negative 8 centimeters. Once you've done a few of these questions, you quickly kind of realize that hundreds of picometers will be 10 to the minus eight centimeters, but still go ahead and show your work when you're doing that. With the radius, I can calculate the length of the side of the cube. The side is two times the radius, so that's two times 1.41 times 10 to the minus eight centimeters. Notice, even if I'm not sure how I'm going to get the final answer, just doing things that seem reasonable um, leads you towards the answer. We found the radius in centimeters. We've got the formula for S equals 2R. So even if I'm not sure why, I can calculate S, the, the length of the side or the edge of the cube, 2.82 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. But now that I know that S is this number here that I'm prompted, I think, grade nine or grade eight, grade seven algebra, we can find, or geometry, I guess, we can find the volume of the cell. It's just S cubed. The volume of a cube is S times S times S. So 2.82 times 10 to the minus eight centimeters cubed. Notice, too, the importance of keeping the units in as you're doing it. If I was leaving out the units and just putting numbers in, I might not catch the need to switch to centimeters. I might be right now cubing picometers without thinking about it. So 2.82 times 10 to the negative 8 to the power of 3 gives me 2.8. 24 times 10 to the minus 23 cubic centimeters. Just some mental math. The side was 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. So 10 to the minus 8 times 10 to the minus 8 times 10 to the minus 8 is around 10 to the minus 24. So this answer looks reasonable to me. So now I have the volume for my density. 2.24 times 10 to the minus 23 cubic centimeters. I need to get the mass of the cell. Well, simple cubic structures have one atom per cell. 
eight, eight corners, eight times one eighth gives me one atom. So the mass of the cell would be the mass of the gallium atom. So that's going to be one times its molar mass divided by Avogadro's number. The molar mass is the mass of one mole of, of gallium, the mass of Avogadro's number of atoms. So to get the mass of one atom, we divide that by Avogadro. So 69.72 divided by Avogadro's number. This should be a very small answer. And sure enough, I get 1.16 times 10 to the minus 22 grams is my mass of the cell. Now I have the mass, I have the volume, I can go find the density. Just looking at those two numbers, when I'm dividing them, 10 to the minus 22 is bigger than 10 to the minus 23. So my answer, but, but they're close, so my answer is going to be, give or take, around 10-ish um, grams per cubic centimeter. So 1.16 times 10 to the negative 22 divided by 2.24 times 10 to the negative 23 gives me an answer of 5.18 grams per cubic centimeter. When I say 10-ish, I just mean within a factor of 10 of 10, so somewhere between 1 and 100, I suppose. All right. Any questions about that? Was that straightforward for you? All right, so this time palladium with a cubic closest packed lattice. And we just mentioned that cubic closest packed is the same thing as face centered cubic. Face centered cubic is the closest packing, had the highest packing efficiency in a cubic structure. So it's also called cubic closest packed. The density is given, and with a periodic table, we can get the molar mass of palladium. So let's organize our information. We have palladium, face-centered cubic. If you imagine again the structure of face-centered cubic, there's eight corner atoms. Eight times one-eighth is one atom from the corners. But then at face center, there's an atom in the center of every face of the cube. And the cube has six faces. Six times a half gives me three more atoms. So there's four atoms per cell. When you look at one of the square faces of the cube, you'll see three atoms going along the diagonal touching each other. When three atoms touch, from center of the first to the center of the last is four radii. And because it's the diagonal of the square face, not the diagonal of the cube, it's the square root of two times s. We know the density this time, 12.02 grams per cubic centimeter. And from a periodic table, palladium's molar mass is 106.42. All right, so this one's, um, we're gonna find the radius at the end of the question. So at the very end, if I look at that formula, I'm going to get the radius taking the 2 times s, dividing by 4. So that means I need to know s to get the radius. Well, to get s, I'm going to take the volume and cube root it. The volume of a cube, if you cube root it, gives you the side of the cube, the edge. That means we're going to need the volume of the cell. The cell, using the density and the mass of the cell. We have the density, that means we need the mass of the cell. So that's where I'm going to start. 
the mass of my cell? Well, it contains four atoms of palladium. So it'll be four times the molar mass of palladium divided by Apicadro's number. This had better be a very small number. It's the mass of four atoms. Seven point oh seven. If you're thinking significant digits here, whenever I do my, my molar mass, I'm, I'm using 6.02. If you keep 6.022, sorry, when I'm dividing my Avogadro, I use 6.02. If you do 6.022, you can keep an extra digit as well. So it's up to you. Looking at the answer, it wants three sig figs, so 6.02 is sufficient for this. There's the mass of the cell. Now you may remember Yesterday we used the density equation to find the volume, but in grade nine, when we did density calculations, we just did unit multipliers almost all the time. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna take the mass, 7.07 .07 times 10 to the minus 22 grams, and with one unit multiplier, I'll switch the grams to cubic centimeters using, um, so the density was 12.02 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, if you want, you could also add on more multipliers, convert your volume to cubic picometers, but I'm gonna do the conversion in the next step. So take my mass, 7.07 .07 times 10 to the negative 22, divide by the the uh, density, 12.02, I get 5.88 times 10 to the negative 23 gram, sorry, cubic centimeters. The volume of the cell. To get the side, we take the volume and we cube root it. Another way to say cube root is to raise to the power of one third, whichever one of those you prefer. I'll raise to the power of one third. So the cube root of 10 to the minus 23 had better be something close to 10 to the minus eight, because 10 to the minus eight times 10 to the minus eight times 10 to the minus eight is 10 to the minus 24. Calculator says 3.89 times 10 to the minus eight, and that'll now be centimeters. Let's convert that to picometers. Actually, no, maybe I'll do that at the very end. I'll, help, I'll get my radius in centimeters, and then I'll convert it to picometers. So the square root of two, times the S, 3.89 times 10 to the minus eight centimeters, divided by four. And then just to convert centimeters to picometers, we'll first switch centimeters to meters, and then we'll switch meters to picometers. So that should give me my final answer. Square root of two times S, 2.89 times 10 to the negative 8, divided by 4, divided by 100, and divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 12. And 138 picometers, which is pretty close to the answer that's given there. All right. All right, so this question is definitely not the same as the others. It's a bit of a twist on what we've been doing. It has an annoying unit, the angstrom, but that's not that much of a problem. Did you notice that that length, the angstrom here, 4.07 angstroms, is the length of the unit cell's edge? So in other words, that's S in, in the language of what we've been doing. S is 4.07 angstroms, and I can convert 
the angstroms to meters using the information given there. And I guess I can convert the meters to centimeters also, which would be helpful. Meter is 100 centimeters, and an angstrom is 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. So that's going to end up being 4.07 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. I'm trying to figure out whether or not the gold takes up a simple cubic, a body-centered cubic, or a face-centered cubic structure. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that, but, but I know S, so I suppose if I know S, I can find the volume of the cell. I'm not sure why I'm doing this, but I can, so I might as well do it. The volume of the cell is S cubed. So 4.07 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. If you were wondering why I switched to centimeters earlier, it's because I was anticipating doing this next step. Um, the volume I'm going to get in cubic centimeters, and looking up at the density, it also has cubic centimeters. So that was my reasoning. So this is going to be 4.07 times 10 to the negative 8 cubed. 6.74 times 10 to the negative 23 cubic centimeters cell. Now what can I do if I know the volume of the cell? Well, I have the density of the, of the gold. So you can find I, the mass. If I know the volume of the cell and I have the density of the gold, I can find the mass of the cell. That's correct. So we can take the volume, whoops, tool there. The volume 6.74 times 10 to the minus 23 cubic centimeters and we can convert the cubic centimeters to grams using the density. So I get 1.30 times 10 to the minus 21 grams now it's important to remember what this represents. This is the mass of the cell. Hmm. Well, how do we find the mass of the cell? How do we typically find the mass of the cell? The you mass of the mass cell. Divided by. Yeah, it's molar mass. So for gold, if look on my periodic table, that's 196.97. We would divide that by Avogadro. And then don't we have to times it by something also? Yeah, the yeah. number of atoms in the cell. So if we call that X, where X is the number of atoms per cell, that formula would give me the mass of my cell. But I know the mass of the cell. So you can isolate x. So now it's just tell me what x is. And when I know what x is, I can tell you then whether it's a simple cubic, body-centered cubic, or face-centered cubic. So if I take the mass of the cell and I multiply it by Avogadro's number and divide by the molar mass, I get that X is 3.98 atoms per cell, which is pretty close to four. And so if there's four atoms per cell, which type of packing is this? Is it simple cubic, BCC, or is it FCC? FCC. That's right, that's the highest number of atoms per cell, this is the base centric cubic structure. If it were BCC, it would have been two atoms per cell. And if it were simple cubic, it would have been just one atom per cell. All right.